I am an historian, but historians are not the only ones who work with history. Archaeologists do too. <laughs> I've still not totally recovered from last week's cold, so I hope you'll bear with me again. And I also have had such a busy week. At the museum where I work, we have started the programme about the refugee situation, and that's a very physically demanding programme for me. And also, I've had a movie premiere, the opening for the first movie, where I actually had a part. One of the main characters was me. So, I hope you can excuse me that I haven't been thinking that much about history this week. But I thought I could at least make a short video about something so basic as the study of history. And what is history? You know, that's such a basic question that we rarely even talk about it because we just take it for granted. Uh, history, of course, is everything that ever happened. And also the stories about everything that ever happened. And also the pictures of things, and, and that's also history. So stories, pictures, and things that happen, that's uh, history. Easy, right? But then we have the field of study. When you study history at university, what's the difference then between a historian and an archaeologist? Because archaeologists also work with history. There are quite a lot of other ones that do that as well. Anthropologists and, and ethnologists and paleontologists and a lot of other ologists. <laughs> but we can say that the biggest ones are the historians and the archaeologists. But what are the differences then between the historical field of study and the archaeological field of study? When I ask that question to the children that I meet at the museum, most of them don't know, but I've had a really nice explana uh, explanation from a young child once. Because in Swedish, uh, the word for history and the word for story are the same. Both of, the, both of it is historia. When I ask them, what do you think? What's the difference between an historian and an archaeologist? He, of course, thought that an historian was a person who just tells stories. So he said, well, the archaeologist perhaps finds out how things really were, while the historian just is making things up. <laughs> I can tell you, um, my archaeologist friends, they laughed and they said, that's completely true. That's not the thing. The difference is the things we work with, with the material we handle. Historians mostly handle things that have been written down. So written words, but also pictures, of course. So historians handle a lot of papers. We read letters, protocols, diaries, while an archaeologist work with artefacts, with things. There are some archaeologists who actually work with the modern day now. Can we interpret the time we live in from the things we surround ourselves with? But we always work together and we have to interpret findings from both points of view if there are material from both points of view. The difficulty in all of this when we talk about women's history is that women throughout history have left less things. In both fields of studies they have left less letters and less protocols and less diaries. They are there but it's not as many as the men's. And the same thing with the field of archaeology, because a lot of the things that women worked with were 
the things that kind of just disappears. Uh, I can, for instance, take uh, <clears throat> I'll take my here. This is a spindle, one of my spindles. I have more of them. This is used for making yarn or threads. The oldest one don't have a hook, and a lot of them don't have one. It's just this is a modern spindle, and uh, and this hook makes it all a bit easier. And this is a woman's tool. But what in this one would survive through the times? If I would put this on the ground and let it be there as if I left a, a homestead or, or some kind of um, dwelling where I lived. In time, the only thing that would survive would be the little hook, the little metal hook. Uh, quite often, the world... Is this is it the word? I think that's the word. It's quite often made from another material than wood, but the rest of it would kind of become compost, you know. And then we would just find a hook, and we couldn't say what that would be used for. We don't know. All the tools that men have been using have had more long living materials in them so they have been made from bronze or iron or copper you know like plows and sides and, and things like that so women's materials aren't very easy to find in an archaeological dig but on the other hand in archaeological digs we can find a spindle but we wouldn't be really sure that that it would be a woman using it if it weren't placed in a woman's tomb or something like that. And the same thing if we would find like this one. Would find this one. This is a comb made from antler, I think. And if we find things that have to do with grooming and and um, you know combing jewellery, makeup things, we always, always kind of assume that it is a woman, but that's not necessarily so. It might just as well be a man. What an historian can do that an archaeologist can't is that the historian can read the actual thought that the person writing it have been wanting to put forward. Well, sorry, but it was quite a lot of rambling, but I hope you learned something new today. See you soon, I hope. Bye! <laughs>